Yo, what up, it's Chris. And Ashley, and today we're gonna have another sit down with you to give you some tips. Seven tips for planning a cruise. Yeah, so this is how you're gonna start things out from the very beginning before you have any idea about anything you wanna do. This can work for your first cruise or for your 50th cruise, wherever you are in your travel uh, destination plans. Number one, mm -hmm. research and choose the right cruise line. So this is important because different cruise lines will have different experiences, right? So some cruise lines are more catered towards family. Some cruise lines are for adults only. Some are for singles. Some are like theme things like Melanin on the Seas and different things like that. So you really want to look at which line um, kind of lines up with what experience you want to have. And in all transparency, we are we have only gone on Carnival cruise ships. Yeah. But we do plan to go on some other ships. I know I have my eye on Royal Caribbean because we live close to the Galveston port, mm -hmm. but I also want to get down to Virgin Voyages at some point. Yeah. And so even when we were deciding on Carnival, you know, we always travel. Well, most of the time we travel with our kids. And so it's really family friendly. You know, the, the ship's amenities, their options for entertainment, their dining options, all of those things uh, really cater towards families and having children. So that's the reason why we've really focused on Carnival mostly. All right. Tip number two, mm -hmm. you need to set a budget. Set a budget. I'll say that again, because the last thing you want to do is to bust the budget while you're booking the cruise. And then when you get on the actual ship and you kind of get to your destinations and things, you don't have any extra money to spend on extra things that you may want to do. You know, some people don't go on a lot of excursions. They kind of like to just pay for the cruise and just kind of, you know, explore the ports when you get there. But if you want to do some excursions, you want to have some fun adventures when you're at the ports of call, you are definitely going to have to have some extra cash in your budget. But you really also need to make sure you're paying attention to the additional expenses that sometimes come with cruising. Um, know that you're going to have to pay your gratuities yeah. and as such. So, you know, you, you can't just say, all right, here's the ticket price and this is all I'm going to pay. Expect to, you know, have, a, like I said, those gratuities and those excursion costs along in your budget as well. Yeah, and there and then there's other things like Chris, I think he's mentioned in previous videos, likes to have his drinks. Yeah. So he always buys a drink package. I do not. Um, it just kind of depends on what your preference is. Um, and then also when you're on the ship, and this we're talking about Carnival when I say this, you know, there's specialty restaurants that will have kind of a surcharge. And so you might want to just have a little bit extra cushion your budget in case you want to do that. I would and on any tr cruise ship, they'll be like buying pictures or buying souvenirs, you know, just things that you want to have some extra cash for. So make sure you include that in your overall budget. When I go back to the drink package. Yeah. When you go to some, some cruise lines like Carnival, for instance, it is actually cheaper to buy your drink package before you board the ship. Yeah. They'll still let you buy it on the ship, but I think before you board, you get like 10% off or something like that. Um, and there's some other uh, like spa packages and things also that I think sometimes get up to 20% off if you book those before you even board the ship. So if you're thinking you may want to look into some of that stuff, go ahead and book it before you decide to board your ship. Yep. Number three. Number right. three. Number three, decide on your port and ports of call. Um, and so, of course, this is important because this goes into the budget as well, because if you're going to go out of a port that's further away from your home, you need to consider if you're going to have to fly there, drive there, get a hotel room and all of those things. Right. So Chris mentioned we live closest to Galveston. So we focused a lot of our most recent cruising out of Galveston, but we have used other ports. Right. Even this summer, we're actually going to um, explore a cruise out of New Orleans. Um, and so I think it's important to look at maybe there's a cruise at a city that you already wanted to visit. Um, and so you can, you know, make it a little mini trip before where you explore that city and then, you know, sail out of that city and then have your cruise as well. I say the big thing about your ports, all of the ports operate a little differently. We've gone out of Miami, um, Mobile, yeah. Galveston and uh, New Orleans will be our fourth port. So they all are a little bit different. So you definitely want to make sure that you've planned out where you're going to park. Um, especially this time for us, we're going out of New Orleans. It's going to be around the time there's going to be some big events happening in the city. Mm -hmm. So we really have to plan, you know, where are we going to park and we're going to have to accommodate for that additional traffic that's going to be in the city of New Orleans at the time. So those are the things you need to think about. Think about, are you going to park very close to the terminal? So you can either get the shuttle that's going to go to the, the, uh, the cruise port, or if you're going to need to, you know, maybe park farther away at a hotel. I've seen some people say some of the hotels will let you park there, but you're going to have to pay for your parking, of course. So keep that, that in mind. Um, but you definitely want to think about that port um, that you're departing out of. Um, even though I, like I said, actually say we're close to the Galveston one. I've seen people talk about, you know, Ubering from the airport to Galveston Cruise Terminal. Um, that's 
doable. <laughs> it's doable. But it's <laughs> going to be a, a fairly decent drive from, you know, the airport, especially if you go from Bush Airport instead of Hobby. That's a very long distance. So you definitely want to make sure that you account for the time for that travel. It's not just like a quick 15, 20 minute drive and you're there. So definitely make sure you look at your port, look at the airport that goes to that port and make sure that you accommodate or an account for enough time to actually get to the ship. And when it comes to the ports of call, um, another thing that's important with that is that when we, since we do focus on Galveston a lot, a lot of times we've gone to a lot of the areas that the ships there will go to. Um, and so if you want to make sure you're exploring new areas, you know, sometimes we'll filter by where the cruises go. Um, if you're willing to kind of go on a cruise that starts in one area, ends in another, you know, just different things like that. So just make sure you look at that because that can really narrow down where you decide of, you know, you want to plan your next vacation. Yes. And all cruises do not always return to the same port the it, the ship departed out of right so you definitely want to make sure you're paying attention to that now typically it's some of the longer cruises that kind of start at one port and end at another one but even some of the longer cruises do come back to the home port you just have to make sure you're paying attention to that while you're booking your cruise yeah all right sure. number four explore the ship online now there are a lot of youtube tour videos um there are a lot of support yeah. groups oh yeah you can check out ours <laughs> There's a lot of support groups on Facebook when it comes to the cruises. There's groups that are specifically just for the VIP members of those cruise lines or just specifically for that particular cruise that you're looking to book or even just for the ship that you plan to sail on. So make sure you look and use those online resources to help you determine, you know, is this cruise new enough to you? Maybe you want to be on a brand new ship. Maybe you want to be on a larger ship or sorry, a larger ship or a smaller ship. Make sure you look online so you have at least some idea of what you're getting into when or before you book your cruise. Yeah, the, and joining the Facebook, Facebook groups is something that we started here a little later. And I really wish we would have done that from the beginning because it's really nice because sometimes they'll, skip, they'll plan meetups, right. they'll give you more information about what's going on on the ship, things to look for that you didn't even realize, you know, where on the ship do I want to have my stateroom, right? If you look at the ship online, the deck plans and all of those things, you can see what's going to be above me. Do I want to be, I don't want to be beneath the kitchen, right? I don't want to be where there's a lot of noise, you know, and then sometimes they'll post, hey, I was in this room. We did that this last time too. We did a walkthrough video. We make sure we put the room number. So, you know, if you go on that ship, this room number, this is exactly where you'll be and, you know, the experience that you'll get. And sometimes you'll find out there's some rooms that uh, are not necessarily upcharged, but right. they may be a little bit larger depending on where they're located in the ship. Yeah. You can find things like that, but also, like she said, there's going to be ways for you to interact with some of your fellow cruisers before you can get on the ship. Yeah, uh, you'll see people talking about some meetups. You'll see people talking about let's do a uh, a what's that a slot machine pool. Mm -hmm. Like everybody pull in a slot machine. We'll see if one person wins, we'll split it all. They have some silence for that. I even saw somebody advertising for them creating some custom door decorations that you can order through yeah. the Facebook group and they'll have it ready for you when you get to the ship because people do decorate their doors. Um, especially helps um, if you have little kids, but also if you like to drink a little bit, it's easier <laughs> to uh, locate your room on that ship if you have some decorations on your door. And for the, the Christmas cruise that we did, people did the stocking stuffers, right. they did gift exchange. I mean, there were just so many different things that you can do. And so I definitely feel like, you know, researching your ship, you know, whether that's through looking like I, looking at the deck plans and all of those things online, or, you know, joining the Facebook groups and all of those things, I think that will give you a lot of good information. It makes you feel more comfortable too. And like you have more knowledge kind of going into um, your selling. Absolutely. Yep. Number five, mm -hmm. research, no, 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 no. research, research. Number five, research your shore excursions before you book. Um, you want to make sure that you're going, to, going on a cruise where, like I say, if you want to do some extra things once you get off the ship, you want to go on a cruise that are going to have some excursions um, with some activities that you're actually interested in. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say sometimes this can be a little hard because I know for Carnival, when, the only way that you can see some of the exact excursions that they offer is after you book because they add new ones all the time, kind of up into selling. But if you do filter by destination, sometimes it'll give you ideas, just kind of highlights of things there are to do there. So you might not know exactly what the cruise is, but you'll have an idea. Is there snorkeling here? Is there zip lining here? You know, is there catamaran here? You know, what all, what things there are available at the destination that you're going to. And they usually have a lot of these kind of like beach, private beach yeah. excursions or, you know, they'll take you to a private part of the beach and they'll make sure that you have all the food provided and drinks included. They Those excursions seem like they're pretty much consistent on every cruise ship. They're going to have a few of those. 
but you know maybe you want to go on an animal show or you want to have a dolphin experience or something like that you need to make sure that you look at those excursions but also not just the excursion you need to make sure you know which port that excursion will be offered on sometimes you're going to ship and there'll maybe there may be a dolphin tour on every port right sometimes you're going to ship and it may only be offered at one of your ports of call so you have to make sure that you're going to have time to make sure you get that particular excursion you're looking for on the port where it's going to be offered and a new experience that we tried this last time was booking a, an excursion outside of carnival um so we'll do a video kind of on some tips about doing that but you know that's another option you can look at some of the websites that are more popular uh, one way we found out about it was through the facebook group so you know make sure you go with someone who people have used and who seems you know people are more comfortable with and that way you can kind of filter even on that website beforehand just to see what things are in the area even if you don't book through them you can use that as a resource just to get more information absolutely all right number six and this is one we have to do a better job on we ourselves. Do. We do. Make sure you book your cruise early. Yeah. When you book a cruise early, you're going to have more flexibility into picking the exact location that you want on the ship versus what's just left over. And when I mean for early, cabin. it's for your cabin. cabin. Yeah. But when I mean early, I don't mean like four months early, right. six months early. When I mean early, like at least a year out, especially now um, with everybody getting back into the travel swing, ships are booking up very quickly. They are. And since they're booking up quickly, the room availability is not always exactly where you want it to be. And just in general, the prices are not going to be as as consumer friendly, we'll say that, <laughs> as what they probably were maybe even a year ago, just because so many people are getting back uh, on cruise ships. So make sure you book that cruise early. Yeah. And, uh, and we struggle with that because, you know, we're trying to plan so many vacations so far out. Sometimes it's hard to think about what you do a year out, two years out. But even some of these big ships that are doing their, what's it called when it's the first time they're selling? Um, I don't remember. Like the Grand, like the, the Grand Voyage? Yeah, whatever it's called. The first time that they're, you know, kind of like unveiling these ships and things like that. A lot of those things will plan, will book out like two years. Um, and so if you don't book it, you don't even get to get on the selling. Some of those new ships are booked like two years out they are. already. They are. So if you definitely want to get want to get on one of those newer, bigger ships, because there are a bunch of cruise lines. You know, Carnival's had a bunch of ships. Royal Caribbean's had a bunch of ships. And of course, Virgin has rolled their ships out pretty quickly. Those ships are booking fast. They are. They are. So yeah, book as early as you can. You know, that way too, you do save money. You get your best location. Um, and then sometimes if you do wait to the last minute, you might have to compromise more on location, but there are certain times that you get cruise deals that will say, okay, if you take this cruise the next month or the, a couple of months later, then you get like 500 on board credit or something like that. Then, then I say, yeah, go for it. You know, if it's worth the money. Um, but you know, you just kind of got to weigh the pros and cons of what you decide to do. Now, if you're willing to cruise off season, you're probably going to get deals emailed to you. Like if you sign up on a cruise, uh, cruise lines, you'll get deep deals emailed to you frequently. Yeah. Because a lot of those off-season crews, you can get at a pretty nice penny, like I said, if you are willing to go and not those peak seasons, like in the summertime, they're going to book up. If you're willing to go in like October, November, you'll probably get a great deal. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I know that makes it hard for people who have children because it just kind of depends on your kid's school calendar and all of those things. One thing that we've started trying to do um, is one, we speak to the teachers. And so let's say a kids have a three day weekend or something like that coming up. Um, then we'll add a day before or after that. We'll have our kids if they have any tests or anything like that, take it early and just be in communication with the school because as long as your kid's not missing a lot of school, they can be flexible for a day here and there. And that sometimes helps us get better rates. And so we have started doing that. Our oldest is going into middle school this year though. So we probably will maybe pump the brakes on that a little bit, see how this first year goes. But we're also gonna go ahead and just talk to the teachers early on and see if it's even a big deal. Um, so I would say as long as you know, you don't have any concerns about your child missing, sometimes doing that can help you save a lot of money. Cause sometimes it's literally been one stateroom, a thousand dollars or something like that per person compared to $600 per person. With six people, that is a big deal. And so it's worth a day of school if and only if they're you know caught up and there's no risk of them missing class or anything like that. And I'll also add about booking cruises. Um, you need to look not only, like I said, at the port that you are wanting to visit, the ports of call, but also the port that your ship leaves out of. Because I think this time in particular, you know, we, we like going out of Galveston. It's a quick drive down the road. But going to New Orleans, the price on the cruise was significantly oh, cheaper. Even though it's going to go to some ports that we probably could have went to out of Galveston, um, I want to say the price was almost like 
a two thousand dollar no, difference. It was. Like, it was two three thousand dollar difference just by going out of New Orleans versus going out of Galveston. Yeah. So definitely make sure you're paying attention to that. Yep. And so now since we kind of got to the booking part, so now you know you've picked your your destination, you picked your shri- ship, you picked your cruise line, you got your cabin, you're booking the cruise. One more thing that you need to make sure you do right as you're booking the cruise is seven, purchase travel insurance. Purchase travel insurance. There's going to be, we all know how life happens. There's going to be times things come up. Somebody gets sick. There's a death in the family. You want to make sure that you're able to get at least cruise credit with that cruise line. Yeah. That travel insurance helps protect you if you have those emergency trip cancellations. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say even in some circumstances, your travel insurance can also help you. Say if you miss an excursion sometimes, you have to definitely make sure you read the fine print. But there's really no reason why you wouldn't want to purchase travel insurance just because life happens. Yeah, I would just consider that part of the budget from the beginning. Like, don't look at it as, a, as an extra expense or anything like that. Say, this is part of my cruise because, you know, if you need to reschedule for any reason, you know, of course, now with COVID, not, COVID testing and all those requirements being loose, um, or being kind of non-existent for some of the cruises is not as big of a deal getting canceled for that. So I think people probably are a little bit more aware of getting travel insurance when COVID was kind of a, more of a highlight. But, you know, there's still things that can happen. And another thing that is huge, and I, I think you probably have seen horror stories online, is that if you get sick when you're abroad, you can't get back on the ship. You have to be either flown back here or you have to have medical care there. The travel insurance will reimburse, sometimes not pay up front. So you have to read what your policy in particular says, but it will reimburse a lot of those expenses. Um, and so the last thing that you want to do is, you know, have a huge medical bill overseas that, you know, you could have just solved with like a $300 plan, right? Right. Yeah. So that's our seven tips for planning a cruise. Yeah. Now remember, the earlier you start planning, the earlier you start researching and booking your cruise, you're gonna have more options available to you. Yeah, and it'll, it'll make you feel more comfortable with your decision and everything like that. If you have any other questions, additional comments, feedback, anything like that, drop it in the comments and please check back in because we're gonna do more and more of these videos, giving you as many tips and things that we've learned along the journey and things that we have in our head. And we have some more cruise content coming your way. So we do. check out the channel, Follow us, subscribe, and just look out for more content from Four Lives of View. All right. Peace.